Hello everyone. This time I'd like to talk about, I think, almost everyone's favorite topic, rocket fuel. And it remotely relates to uh, space access, uh, interplanetary transport system plans and such. But it's actually a really old topic. That is the comparison of uh, light and heavy fuels, or rather uh, the classic LH2 LOX mixture, uh, liquid hydrogen, or uh, heavier, more chemically complicated fuels like uh, methyl ox or RP1. Now we all like the uh, hydrogen-oxygen mixture because it's really cool. It's very simple in a chemical way. It's uh, just split up water. It's extremely efficient and extremely energetic reaction. And it, thus it has a very high ISP. So it's a lot of thrust time per fuel rate. But uh, heavy fuels also have a lot of advantages. And many of these come down to availability uh, in terms of potential deep space exploration and refueling and storage as uh, hydrogen is really difficult to store. But in fact, this storage thing goes a bit deeper. It's not just, uh, it's not just the technical complexity uh, as I've kind of figured out, I'd like to give you a little example, that uh, the heavier fuels that are technically more less efficient can actually be more efficient in praxis because you can kind of calculate a hypothetical practical ISP where you take, of course it depends on what kind of rocket design you have, but you could take a certain stage size, you could take as an example, one stage, and you have a certain fixed ratio between the uh, full stage and the stage's payload. And then you can calculate the delta V, and then you can compare it. Hypothetically speaking, uh, you can imagine a fuel that requires no fuel tank, which is impossible, but you can just imagine it. And then you can calculate what kind of specific impulse that fuel would need to reach the same delta V at the same mass ratio with just Tsiolkovsky's equation. And if you do that depending on what kind of rocket design and stage size you have, you'll actually come up with a better practical ISP for heavier fuels than for hydrogen. That is, for example, if you take a rea really large stage, let's say some uh, extreme deep space booster with a very little rocket engine and a huge fuel tank, then you actually come up with a much more efficient uh, kerosene than uh, hydrogen because the hydrogen fuel tank is just way heavier compared to the fuel. And if you, for example, calculate a uh, a full to payload ratio of 20, and you then uh, calculate the delta V, then uh, you actually end up with more delta V at the same full stage to payload mass ratio with uh, kerosene or RP1 than you would get with hydrogen. So in a way, hydrogen can actually be less efficient than RP1 if you take into account the uh, fuel tank mass. And uh, hydrogen is not just extremely difficult to store in terms of technical complexity, but you also need a relatively heavy fuel tank, especially over a longer time. It gets really, really difficult. But uh, even over a short time, because hydrogen is has a really low atomic mass or molecular mass, but it's just a basic 
to add a molecule you have a you need a lot of pressure to get a lower a higher density at uh, in gaseous hydrogen and even if you use liquid hydrogen you still need a lot of cooling and a lot of pressure to uh, reach a relatively low density where there's kerosene or other similar fuels you don't really need much pressure or much uh, cooling or you, you can cool it but you, you don't need as much pressure or cooling to reach a much higher density and well the oxidizer is usually somewhere in between but it's comparably easy to store com compared to hydrogen so I ran this calculation for a ratio of full stage to payload of about 20 and I came up that uh, with a relatively good uh, kerosene based engine that has a an ISP of maybe around 350 and a kind of good hydrogen based engine that has an ISP of let's say 420 you'd actually end up with ISPs of 280 for the uh, kerosene based engine and just 240 for the hydrogen based engine if you take a relatively large stage and you take into account the fuel tanks mass and you calculate the hypothetical practical ISP for a larger rocket system so I hope that was a little interesting insight and uh, I'm always open for suggestions and feedback and thanks for watching.